The wind turbine industry has created the need for special transport to transport the windmill sections. In this review we look at one of those vehicles and it's a mega windmill transporter. And as you can see from the box it's in the colours of the Dutch heavy lifting and transport specialist Mammut. The model is made by WSI and when we lift the lid of the high quality packaging we see black foam and protective paper. There's some additional packaging to remove off of the lift adapters and this film is just retaining a pin in place during shipping. This is a Mammut model so there is a collector card and it shows this is a limited edition of 500 models made. To complete the Volvo tractor there's a pin to go in the towing hitch and then we move on to assemble the mega windmill transporter. At the front end there's a jeep dolly which has a lift adapter and as you can see the windmill tower section has holes for the lift adapter to engage with. You engage the two bottom parts of the lift adapter first and then insert the top one and by adjusting the height of the top part you effectively clamp it in place. Now we repeat the process again, this time with the lift adapter that's on the dolly at the back of the transporter. And as we're doing this you can see there's a long cable that stretches between the two and we need to tidy that up. The cable is attached to a length of rope which has hooks on the end and we're going to use that to get a tight line to keep the cable in place. There's a hooking on point at the jeep dolly and there's a similar one at the back. Out of the box the rope is a bit too loose so we need to wind it up a bit and when it's all tight the cable is held nicely in place. The tilt rams have holes so you can pin and fix the extension and once the transporter is all joined up it rolls smoothly. Let's run to the front end and get that sorted and to begin with there are a couple of metal support bars and they can be put in to support the gooseneck. But we don't really want our transporter parked up so let's bring in the Volvo tractor and connect it to the transporter. Now usually this connection is a clunk click does the trick, but on the review model it was difficult to get the kingpin into the fifth wheel. But once the connection's made we can rotate our supports and we'll put them into a transport mode. If you don't want to do that then you have to carry them down to the end of the transporter and put them into the carrying holder. So we've made all the connections, now we need to add some detail. And the two long width markers get put in at the Jeep dolly at the front. And the two shorter ones get added to the dolly at the back. They take a little bit of effort to get in, but once in, they stay in firmly. The tractor is a Volvo FH4 Globetrotter and as you always expect from WSI models it has a very detailed chassis. The gearbox and all the parts are there and the tyres have a different tread front and rear. Up on the roof there are nice stub aerials and a light bar and at the front there's Mammut above the windscreen. The mirrors on this model have a particularly nice finish and this Volvo has an impressive front grille. There are nice chevron graphics and a realistic number plate. On the side is the Mammut strap line and the quality of the decoration and graphics is very high. 
At the front there's a Mammut fleet number and the wheels have a nice smart and detailed finish. Also nice is the graphics applied on the fairing between the wheels. There's a big set of cabinets behind the cab and coming from them are coiled lines and there's a nice textured surface. At the back of the tractor graphics add more detail. The front of the transporter is a four axle Jeep dolly and the axles are all faithfully modelled. Both it and the seven axle dolly are made by Notabom and the rear dolly exhibits the same level of detailing. At the front of the Jeep dolly there are boxes with modelled handles and a spare wheel. A particularly nice touch are the small graphics applied and they add to the authentic look. Up on top there's a generator and with that are the associated storage tanks and they have highlighted caps. The lift adapter parts are modelled in metal and there are nice textured walking surfaces. The windmill tower section is a resin part and at the ends the rough texture of tarpaulins are modelled. There is also detailing along the tower including its sections and an access hatch. The tower is a heavy resin part which also doubles up as an offensive weapon. At the back of the dolly there's a storage box and also the mechanism for forced steering of the turntable. There's another generator and set of tanks and there's the same high quality finish including the yellow stripes. Other tiny graphics add detail and a very nice touch on the lift adapters and the tiny control consoles. At the back more graphics add to the excellent decoration. We start with the Volvo and the rear axles spin freely and there's limited linked steering on the front axles. Out on the Cranes etc super highway the Volvo is a willing runner in a straight line but if we set the steering the turning circle is very limited. As usual one feature that is normally well engineered and that is the tilting cab and it holds the tilted pose nicely and then you can see the Volvo branded engine. Moving to the Jeep Dolly, the front two axles don't steer, but there is steering on the rear two axles. There is sprung suspension, but one feature that's not modelled are the lift axles on axles one and two. Moving to the seven axle Dolly, and there is steering on the rear axles, as you can see, and it achieves a very good range of movement. Just like on the Jeep Dolly, each axle has independent suspension. There's some nice functionality on the rear dolly and the steering mechanisms work well so it is possible to set some interesting poses. The lift adapters are very flexible and if you remove the pins you have a variety of different extensions possible on the telescopic beams. With the whole trailer assembled you get something that's very impressive and if you've got the space it rolls along very nicely. You do have another option which is to show the transporter without its load. So let's imagine it's delivered the tower section and to travel back and collect its next load you interlock the two lift adapters and then effectively you get one continuous trailer. Once that's done you just need to tidy up the cables and in this example giant hands are used to tidy the cables up and store them on the dolly at the back. The marker boards can be put into the storage box. So we've seen that this is a very big model so let's do a dim check and get the tape out. And fully loaded the model is about 91 centimeters or 3 feet long. But if you don't quite have the space you can display it without the load. And then it's 53 centimeters or 21 inches long. The Notabom Mega Windmill Transporter is a very impressive vehicle and this model of it by WSI is equally impressive. It looks very sharp in the colours of Mammut and it's a very nice combination of detailing and functionality. Overall the model is rated as excellent.